This is the Real Estate Investing Abundance Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Allen. I just want to take a moment to introduce you to our company, Steed Talker Capital. Steed Talker Capital is a real estate investment firm. If you'd like to learn more about real estate investing, head over to our website, steedtucker.com. And while you're there, take a moment to get your one-page guide to the 10 steps to passive real estate investing. Downloading this PDF will also enroll you in our Enlightened Investor Circle. And by enrolling in the Enlightened Investor Circle, you'll be the first to know about any new investment opportunities that we are getting involved with. Look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy today's show. Hello, enlightened investors, and welcome back to Real Estate Investing Abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Allen. I'm so happy to be back with you today, and I'm very excited to have with us an individual who is going to show us and tell us how that we can take advantage of public adjusters to protect our portfolio and grow our assets. So over the last decade, Andy Gerchak has had the opportunity to protect thousands of people from being defrauded by their insurance companies, but he has also helped them receive more money than what their insurances initially offered. So we are happy to have you with us, Andy, to talk about these pertinent issues. And so, Andy, take us into the show and share a memorable experience that helped you to be who you are today. All right, Alan, thank you so much for having me on, first of all. It's a pleasure. And yeah, we're my name is Andy with All City Adjusting. We're a licensed public adjusting firm. And one of the memorable things, I guess, from my previous you know years would be uh, meeting my mentor uh, when I was 17, going to a car dealership business. Um, it was a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Luckett who first introduced me to what money is, what sales is, uh, what success is. I mean, everything. Uh, he laid out the principles, uh, the books, everything for me. Um, and that's kind of how I learned about, you know, running a business and and, and everything else that I know today. Um, I think I most of it, I, I, I thank him for it. Sounds like a wonderful, was it a serendipitous connection there or did you go out intentionally looking for him? You know what? I was at 17. I was still in high school and a friend of mine uh, introduced me. They, they, they had some training position. So I applied um, and during my senior year of high school, I was able to uh, have an early release program where at you know, I would release school at 12.30, be at the dealership at 2, Monday through Friday, 2 to 9, in this training program. And then I would just bug him and stay in touch. And kind of, he taught me everything I knew that my parents, you know, they, who are great, that didn't know about success or money or investing. Um, he taught me all that and showed me all that. So that's, you know. Well, neat. Wonderful experience there. Yeah, some great things can come out of those early release uh, high school programs. Yeah, I'm glad you had that opportunity there. First of all, Andy, I think many of us don't really know what a public adjuster is. So if you can just explain yeah. to us what public adjuster is and what you do. Easy way to understand it is we're a private adjusting firm. A public adjuster is a private adjuster, a adjuster that works for the insured themselves to represent them, negotiate their settlement and represent them during the whole claims process. You had an experience in working with one of your clients that the insurance company had initially quoted them $3,000 for their settlement. And you worked with this individual and ultimately they received $600,000 yep. for the property. So if you can tell us about that particular incident and, and how all of that came about. Yeah, that loss was a fire loss that happened in Illinois. Now, again, with a bunch of scenarios like this, but this one going back, they were offered, they came in, it was a total fire to the truck shop. The adjuster came out, he gave the, the insured 3000 and said, you know, uh, you know, give us a list, put, do this, do that. And then sure, it's like, hey, I run a business. I have no idea what you guys want from me. Um, so then he called us, we came in, we handled the claim, you know, right after he, he signed with us to the end, it was a payout over, it was over 600000 for him, so... 
Wow. So he had, a, you know, his policy book was, you know, this, this thick. We went through all of it. Every coverage, every endorsement he had that we could go after, we got him. I mean, wow. we, we maxed out everything. I guess we could, you could say that probably almost anybody could benefit from that. But can you tell us specifically what kind of situations would an individual seek to go out and to find uh, an adjuster yeah. to help them with their claims? Yeah, if it's an investor or a landlord or business owner, I mean, it, it's good to have a public adjuster on your team. You should have one before you have claims because a good public adjuster will even look over your policies and make sure you don't have any exposed uh, liabilities um, and make sure you have good coverage for your properties. But then if you do have a loss, you know, you want to get that P- public adjuster, the private adjuster involved right away, right? As mm-hmm. soon as you can. So as soon as, you know, even going from when the loss happens, have that public adjuster there so he could call the claim in and handle it from day one. Now, a public adjuster will tell you on site whether you should file the claim or whether you whether you should not. We just inspected a property, uh, it was a large uh, uh, association. I think there was 170 buildings. Um, they were told by a couple of companies, file a claim, file a claim. You guys had storm damage from a couple of years ago or a year ago. After we took it, looked through it, you know, we advised the association that it's better to withdraw the claim and not proceed because there's nothing there. The storm was from previous years. It was just stuff that didn't add up, and we knew that it would just hurt them in the long run. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as much as a, a, a good public adjuster, like what we do is we'll advise because there's, there's a right time to file a claim and there's a good claim to file. Some claims don't make sense. If it's a small claim, whether it might not meet your deductible. So there's just different scenarios. What could be the harm in filing a claim? Yeah, if you file a claim, for example, if they were to go proceed on filing a claim, the insurance company would come out, they would do an inspection of all the buildings, and then what would happen is they would have all the documents, they would have photos, and they would then say, you do actually, they do have a claim in a year or in two years. And they would go, well, two years ago, we were here, and this damage was here, this is old. Now they could say oh. everything that just happened is old, and now oh. from the current storm, and now you're getting involved with engineers and all this other stuff, and it would just hurt them. Or they might get dropped because the insurance might come through and say, you know what, now that we actually look through this building, we're not going to insure you no more because we saw some damage or we see that everything's old. We don't want to insure you no more. And now that's going to go into a claim file. Those photos are going to be available for the next insurance company. All that would do is hurt our client. Well, I'm sure those are things that a lot of people have never thought of. I, for one, wouldn't have given much thought to that. But that could be very, very devastating. What kind of claims then are the claims that you can be most helpful with? I think every claim that an insured has, we're going to bring significant value, whether it's move the claim quicker, whether it's negotiating, maximizing the settlement, um, but also on a smaller claim, advise them that you have a limit of this much. You wouldn't even need to just file the claim. They're just going to max this coverage out and there's no need for a public just or anyone else because you do have so much in coverage. So um, I think any kind of claim, you should bring a PA and at least advise you, do you need one in that scenario? Is it going to help? Majority of our claims are going to be large losses, whether it's fires for residential, uh, large water losses, or then going into commercial properties, roofs, again, fires, tornadoes, storm damage, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like a wonderful service. And of course, those kind of services don't come free of charge. So what uh, kinds of charges are there and how do those work? Yeah, right. our, our fee, wherever we go, whatever state we're, that we're licensed in, we work in, it's, it starts at 10%. If it's a claim, we would come in and you would call Alan and say, you know, I was denied or, you know, this happened. I've been working this claim for a year and nothing has happened. Well, then our fee might be more based on what's happened because there's just going to be more work to ba- backtrack the claim and get all the detail. But then if we are representing our clients uh, and we the, the, the clients that have been with us for years, you know, we'll have a scale for them, meaning our claim percentage will go down from 10% as the claim gets larger, right? And those are for the large association uh, and the large properties. So the way your structure works, it sounds like it would be a good idea to associate with you, like you suggested, at the very onset of acquiring uh, the insurance policy and, well, even before getting the insurance policy so that you can review it. Well, so the 10% is what I understand here is 10% of the funds generated from uh, the claim. Well, if we are to hire you at the onset, at the time that we are acquiring a policy, what kind of charges would there be for that? 
there is no charge. If you called, you know, if you called today, Alan, and you said, Andy, we have all these policies. Can you guys look over these policies for us? Can look at these buildings? We do that. that really? That's in-house. That's free. Um, that's why I tell clients or when I'm on podcasts, I, I tell people like, hey, call us. Send your policies. Let us review it. Let us see. Because if you call us when you actually do have a loss and now you have this endorsement base, for example, if the, if a commercial property calls in and they have, there's a endorsement they're putting in or in policies now that says, you know, mirroring or cosmetic damage, right? They're mm-hmm. saying that hail that hits your your metals and, and everything else is just cosmetic. So we're not going to pay for all that damage. Wow. So there, yeah. So there's a lot of, you know, there, yeah, we have one where they're using a 60% unoccupied clause. So the insured was at the property five days a week and they said, so his claim is 600, 300,000, but they're only going to pay 60% because the other 40, uh, he has an exclusion that if you're not living at that property, then that's when that 60% kicks in. So now we have to fight that. No, he was living there and it doesn't say that you have to be there seven days a week. All these things, right? We'll review that for free. There is no charge. We only get paid once we actually help with the claim and the claim gets settled. There is no retainers or hidden fees. It's, no. hey, Alan, we, we've negotiated your claim. We got the settlement. And once you get the check is when we get paid. Yeah. So if this client had come to you at the onset of that policy, you could have addressed that particular clause from the get-go and it wouldn't have been there and it wouldn't have been an issue. In that, is, is that, that is exactly your there's a hundred percent correct. We would have, we would have, that would have been avoided. Most claims if we, they were brought to us from the beginning, they wouldn't have been denied, delayed. It would have went smooth, right? Yeah. It just, it, most people, when they're calling claims and we're talking to adjusters and insurance companies, they just overly talk and people say too much and they mm-hmm. give out too much information that's not needed. But what it does is then the insurance company will take that and say, ah, you know what? Well, this thing kind of is throwing a red flag. Well, let's do this and let's, too much is hurting people then. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point. So people are just trying to to be helpful to the insurance agent and they're oversharing and hurting themselves. Correct. So when it comes to your insurance agent, you want to be as honest as possible, right? You want to tell them everything you have. So when they're insuring you, they insure you the correct way. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to claims and they're speaking with their insurance adjusters and the people that are taking calls, you know, they're saying too much and they're saying the wrong stuff. And it's, again, it's hurting them. They're not mm-hmm. trying to, you, you, and again, not saying something is not is better than saying too much. Well, those are interesting things to consider. So you talked about fire and you said that a lot of your claims are fire and then uh, weather is also an issue. What about death on the property? That's that we wouldn't handle. Vehicle claims, we don't handle any death or liability claims. We don't, I don't know any other PAs that do. That would be more of an attorney. So for us, it's it's the structures, uh, mm. it's structures, or even boats or airplane uh, or crop uh, or crop damage. But liability and that that would be yeah, that would be an attorney that would handle that. Enlightened investors, if you haven't done so already, be sure and click that like button and also click that share so others can take advantage of the content. And finally. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of our upcoming episodes. Well, that is uh, very interesting. So you talked about the fire claim in particular. Can you give us uh, some other examples of uh, situations where you have gone in and have made a difference in a person's claims? Yeah, I mean, uh, every day we have claims. Uh, we just finished uh, a church uh, a church settlement uh, their initial offer was seven hundred thousand. We're about three point three and a half million. Really? So the, the wow. adjuster that came out for the insurance company uh-huh. said he came in, he looked around, he wrote an estimate, and he said, "Hey, this is out of my league. I can't, I can't do this." Really? So the insurance company sent uh, a third party consultant who met with us, who kind of, we went through, and, and and now we're just negotiating, and and we're right close to the numbers that we gave them, or three point three and a half million. Wow. So give us some details in conjunction with that. The insurance company initially said something like 700,000. Mm-hmm. It was uh, around 700, correct. What, what were they basing that on in conjunction to the fact that it came out really essentially to be over three times that amount? They estimated for half the building. They didn't estimate using the right. The, the program these, the insurance companies use to estimate damage is a residential program. So unless you know how to use it and manipulate it, 
yeah. and m when I say manipulate, yeah. I mean make it adjust it to adjust it for a commercial building. Mm -hmm. Then most adjusters for the insurance companies don't know how to use that program that way. They're just not taught that way, right? Mm -hmm. So this adjuster that came out kind of got the the couple of the main mm -hmm. items. But then when you actually go throughout the building and figure out the building construction and knowing the knowledge of how the building is constructed, we figured, you know, you have to do this to do this. And then you have to go and do this to get to this point. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got to our numbers. And again, we use the same program as they do. So they can't come back and say, Andy, well, this is just a made up estimate. No, it's the same estimate software you guys use. There's nothing, you know, you can argue, well, this doesn't need to be done or this can be cleaned. But whether we're using the legit numbers, it's the numbers from their own system. That's an interesting scenario, too. So even on big claims, the insurance companies don't have people trained to deal with commercial properties? No. Now what they're doing is they're, they're, they're sending consultants. Uh -huh. They're sending, you know, third-party consultants, roofing companies or construction companies to do their estimate. And what that does also is relieve them of any liability, right? Because mm -hmm. if you go, if we say, well, you guys acted in bad faith or you guys did something, well, we didn't write the estimate, that contractor did. Yeah. And that contractor doesn't have to be licensed. He doesn't have to do anything in regards to insurance statutes. So right. they're very smart of how they're proceeding, right? It relieves them of liability. They also don't have to pay any you know, benefits and teach these adjusters how to do estimates the right way. The adjusters we still know, the large lot adjusters that work for insurance companies that we have good contact with, those are, you know, they're almost on their way out. Right? They've been with insurance companies for 30 years. They're pushing them out because they have to pay them so much. And But these are the adjusters that were in construction. That when we meet in site, there is no argument. They know the same stuff we know. They, they know exactly what needs to be paid. Mm -hmm. um, it's all these new adjusters that are coming out that, you know, they're taught, hey, we don't pay for this. We don't do this. And it's all to quick to pay and ensure the quick offer mm -hmm. and then kind of delay that claim furthermore. Wow. So the insurance companies are having untrained individuals go out there who know nothing about construction projects and they're being trained to make the claim as small as they can in hopes that the insured uh, will go, okay, well, if that's what you say it is, that's what we'll accept. How often does that happen? Well, I'll tell you, and because most people will say, well, you're just saying that because you're a public adjuster and you just want business. Well, uh, if, if you want proof, the, there was an article released two weeks ago, and, and it wasn't from a small publication. It was from the Washington Post. And it was written based on adjusters coming out from the insurance company and giving this reporter all this information. And mm -hmm. what was happening, this is based on Hurricane Ian and what's going on in Florida. And we've seen this for the last 10 years, right? We, we see this all the time. But people don't. And now this article is shedding light on the fact that an adjuster came to your house and he says, Alan, you know, you have major damage. Your estimate, I'm going to be around 200000 for all this damage. Well, two weeks later, you get a letter with a check for 20000 And then an estimate is showing, you know, twenty five or 30000 in damage. Here's your first check for twenty. And you're like, whoa, I have all this damage. Even the adjuster said. Mm -hmm. So now you're calling the adjuster that was at your house. And he goes, well, Alan, that's what I wrote. I submitted 200, over 200,000 in damages. I sent them all my pictures. And then you send the, the paperwork you got to that adjuster. He looks it over and, and he says, well, they're not including half my photos. They took it out all my notes and they basically changed my whole estimate around. So what the desk adjuster is doing is basically just using some of this, you know, so that what the report sheds on, and this is not just one adjuster this is not one insurance company it was a it, it was multiple and this happens all the time where we meet adjusters on site they say one thing and then the desk adjuster is, is doing another thing and they're just just cutting estimates in half or underpaying removing stuff and altering the field inspection mm -hmm. so with like florida is trying to pass a law right now that's gonna basically that's trying to eliminate that that you can that if they're going to change an estimate in after the fact they have to explain why they did it right mm -hmm. they just can't remove the field adjusters or field consultants entire report and alter it and now they do this to engineers why do you think when when people have storm damage or fires or water damage they're sending out all these engineers again liability is one thing right we can mm -hmm. pass the liability onto the engineering company but also because it's always the same engineering companies it's three or four different engineering companies well, how are they going to write? All their business is coming from these insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Are they going to write in favor of you or the insurance company? Of course, the insurance company. Those right. reports are so biased towards the insurance companies. It's, it's, it, and the insured has no, you don't really have, what else are you going to do? You just kind of 
understand. They're like, wow, what do I do at this moment? Yeah. Uh, most of us wouldn't have any, a clue as to what to do in conjunction with that. Well, Andy, you've given us a, a good idea here as to how the business works here. So tell us about your specific business and how our audience can get in touch with you to take advantage of these services. Yeah, for all your listeners, um, I'm, I'm leaving, I'll, I'll leave your listeners my cell phone number, right? They can text or, or call anytime. My number is 708 655 Four one eight six, and that's direct cell phone to me. They can text me, they can call me, and I have listeners from others podcasts call me all the time. I'm more than happy to talk over the phone when, when we have time. They can also check us out on you know allcityadjusting.com. They can type in my name or the company name and get articles, blogs, all the videos we've done, educational videos for clients. But the best way to understand our company is we've grown with our investors, with our landlords, with our business owners. And as they've grow, grown their portfolios, we've grown with them. And we're kind of next to them. And we're on their teams and we're helping them. We're reviewing their policies. When they have a loss, we get called in. And we're, we'll inspect and make sure, yes, let's. this is a claim you should file or this claim you shouldn't file. And we walk them through. Because at the end, our clients not only walk away with a huge settlement, it gets done much quicker. They're having money to pay the contractor and have money to invest in more properties. Because what you're owed is what you're owed. You're not gaining financial, you, it's not uh, illegal to get paid for what you're owed. It's a lot of people think, well, you know, oh, if you guys come in and you guys, you know, what you guys put in your estimate, is it just fluff or is it just stuff that, you know, they, they want to, no, what we put in our estimate is what they owe you. It's just, you just don't know that. So, you know, that's kind of our specialty, large, lo large loss, storm damage, fires. But when we have a, a client, an investor, a landlord, a business owner, anyone, we grow with them. So then we take the small claims and help them with any kind of claims. Have you had any instances of just uh, of structural failure? Uh, we did. That, well, tell us about we that. So last year we had, a, this is a good example. This was on, it was right outside of downtown Chicago. Large client of ours, they're big investors. And this was, we got a call. I remember it was in the morning. The owner called and said, Andy, I'm sending you pictures. Our building just collapsed. We were, we just did the roofs. So it was a three-story building, brand new construction, three-story building, the entire home, the entire building collapsed. They just did the roof. They did the HVAC electrical inside. Wow. They were about to enclose it from the outside. And he sent me pictures. And I'm just like, wow, how did this thing fail? I mean, and mm. so when we got the call from the adjuster, when we called the claim and got the call right away, he's like, well, how did it just fall? Well, we're like, well, it passed all the inspections. It was built per with licensed contractors, usual engineers. They had this microburst that hit that kind of couple homes there, and it literally took the whole house down. Wow. So that was a structural claim. That one took a while because we, you know, they wanted to, again, go after, well, it was just, you know, bad construction or mm -hmm. uh, improper building. No, everything passed inspections. Everything was done the right way. It's hard to prove when you have those microbursts in serious, certain areas, but those mm -hmm. happen, and we're seeing them more and more. What is a microburst? I've not heard of that. It's it's like a little tornado. I don't know if they oh. call them F one, but it happens in small pockets. Like right mm -hmm. now, we have the the storm came in through this Midwest, right? And we were in uh, this is part of Indiana. We visited where you would see nothing, no damage. Mm -hmm. But then you go down one block, and half the homes have trees on them, and the roofs are taken out. It only affected that area, mm -hmm. and it wasn't wind. It's just a mini that micro burst that hits that one area, and we've seen that actually a lot. Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting. Yeah, and structural damage is very. So when we when we get calls a, a car into a building, insurance comes out. You know, if they come out, they're going to send their engineer out, or they're just going to put for estimate this damage. But structurally, you don't know the extent of damage until you actually have. So we like to get our own engineers to inspect the buildings because you don't know the extent until you actually have a real structural engineer come in and inspect the entire building. Yeah, absolutely. And there could be all kinds of hidden hidden issues all the time. From from a strike like that. Andy, what has been one of your most difficult cases to adjust? And how did you deal with that? And what have you learned from that situation? One of the most difficult ones, well, they're all, uh, <laughs> obviously difficult. One of the, one interesting one I've shared, I think in some other videos is one where our client was denied. Uh, it was a, a multi-unit building, he was denied. And he was denied because they said he didn't have sewer backup mm. coverage, right? That's an endorsement that most people just most people have, and most people don't have it now uh, because it's extra money. But what happened is once we read the denial and went actually met with this plumber on site, the plumber explained that you know the water didn't back up, you know, 
someone actually clogged uh, the, I don't know if it was the toilet or the tub, and then water couldn't go anywhere, so then it was backing up. Well, when you have a clog, it's actually then considered coverage. It's not a sewer backup. So now that's a covered loss. So then we were able to overturn it, take that loss, um, and get paid uh, full for everything that was damaged. Wow. Andy, it's been fascinating. I've just learned so much today. Things I had never even considered or thought about. So thank you so much, Andy, for being with us. It has been a true pleasure having you today. Alan, thank you for having me. And a pleasure on my side. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. Enlightened investors, don't go yet. I have just a couple of quick requests. You know the drill. Like, share, and subscribe. But we also need your help to build our audience, so please go to your favorite podcast app and leave us a five-star rating and review. I'll be most grateful. Until next time, prosper and live abundantly. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Investing Abundance, brought to you by Steve Talker Capital, a company working for passionate professionals like you to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steve Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steve Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. For resources to develop your financial independence, connect with us at stevetalker.com.